The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 26th. Yeah, it's July 26th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can make we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out. What those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877 927 6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. And I'll send that off early and send that to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow up 18, the S&P up 13, the Nasdaq off 140, the Russell up 6, the semis off 83, the trendies up 397. Pretty mixed up bag. That mix probably uh, gets resolved around 2.30, maybe 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock or so. The S&P 500 uh, down 13 points. Gold is uh, up 6 bucks. Silver's up 8 pennies. Lights we crewed off a, about a dime. Natural gas down 7 cents. 30-year treasury printed out at 125.27. That is up 10 ticks. Now, leading the charge dollar-wise today, you have Silicon Motion Technology. 40 bucks, a 77-point move. I hope you've got some of that. Vicor Corp up 27 bucks, a 46% move. I've Hope you got both of those. Lithia up 27 bucks, 10 percent. Old Dominion, 6 percent. Union Pacific, 10 percent move for 22 bucks. To the downside, the Shakers, monolithic power systems off 32 bucks, nearly 6 percent. Broadcom, 23, two and a half percent. Affiliated Managers Group, 20 bucks, 12 percent. Teledyne off 4 percent. Euronet Worldwide off 16 percent. We've got some move. And Microsoft down 16 bucks. That's off four and a half percent. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But where do we want to begin? Let's begin. Let's begin like we always do. Where are we at with regard to market breadth out here? Let's take a look at the 30 minute time frame right now for the 30 minute time frame. It is still bullish for the S&P 500, 218 above, 130 below. When I say above, I'm referring to above resistance or above the top of a profile. Below would be below support. In the case of the NDX 100, 20 above, 51 below. So here we've got a mixed bag as well when it comes to the 30-minute signals. Let's see if that gets cleared up at all when we take a look at the other four time frames that you and I can monitor. That's the 60-minute, 240 daily and weekly, all bullish for the S&P 500. And we take a look at the NASDAQ. It is bullish for those other four time frames. So the only bearish signal that we have out here comes from a 30-minute profile for the NQ. All right, so we know that. We'll take a look at what all that might mean. First, let's go take a look at Let's switch panels. Let's go to those white background charts. We'll take a look at the daily. Then we'll dig down into those uh, intraday charts out here. But here we can see you've got that Rhodes Mint Dimidicator top confirmed on July 20th. Another bearish uh, engulfing candle would confirm another one. But right now, we just have a consolidation with inside profiles. What busts that consolidation would be a close below 4507. Uh, and you need to see two of those closes out there. You can see on my, uh, my other chart here if we get this so we have two different profiles for the es mini 4507 level came from the bottom of the black background charts if price closed below that your next price target is 4456 that's the bottom of the white background 
um, uh, calculations for the task market profiles. The same data is being used. Same data is being used. If we take a look at the NQ out here, also erodes momentum indicator top. And here the level that we're watching, we're in sync here is at 13, I'm sorry, it's a 15,586 area. But really the level to watch is that little doji candle from two days ago. If price closes below that low of 15,483, that'll trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. In the case of the Dow, the Dow completed a TD9 count top yesterday. There is a new profile. It's not shown on this chart here, but the new profile that's attempting to form has resistance up at the high of 35,693. The low or the bottom of the profile, 35,247. Now, the key to be watching here is certainly going to be yesterday's high. That high, 35,693. If price closed above 35,693, the TD9 count gets negated, says a strong momentum move to the upside on a daily time frame. The A to B equals CD pattern will just simply continue or extend itself. It's reached the one to one level. It did that yesterday at the 35,633 area. The one to 1.272 expansion would take us up into the 36,376 level. And finally, the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 confirmed a wave number seven, confirmed a TD9 count top. Also, right now, price just consolidating with inside its profile. So now we've got tops in all four of the equity future contracts, just like we've got tops inside the Dow Cash Index, the SP 500, the NDX 100, the semis, the NASDAQ Composite, the New York Stock Exchange, the SPY, the Qs, the IWM, the Diamonds, the XLV, the XLF, the XLC, the XLY, the XLP, the XLRE, and the SMHs. You don't think we've got a few topping signals that are out there? That doesn't mean that the market is going to definitely move lower out there. If those tops get taken out, that tells us about strong momentum moves to the upside. But right now, the message is the market has generated those tops. Now, let's see what sellers can do. Speaking about what sellers can do, let's just simply go dive down, take a look at an intraday chart here. Let's start with the ES Mini, even though we know... On the ES Mini, in fact, what we do know on the ES Mini, let's take a look at that 30-minute time frame chart. We know that it has a bullish uh, configuration, meaning there are more instruments trading above the top or resistance, top of its profile versus trading below the bottom of its profile. Now, in the ES Mini, it happens to be trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. Now, the key level here for the ES Mini for its 30-minute time frame, I don't care whether it's bullish or bearish, TAS market breadth is going to be 45.79.50. If 45.79.50 gives way for two consecutive <laughs> Bars, that would be an early warning signal that there is a change in trend that is attempting to unfold. What do you mean, Stevie? What I mean is if we just simply take a look at TD9 count breakout and breakdown levels, those would be the green lines would be breakdown levels. When price closes above that, that is a bullish signal. And we have breakdown out levels that would be the red horizontal lines you can see here coming off of the july lows out here we have not seen a break other than this one little time frame for about a couple of hours here this was in uh, about the july 16 time frame otherwise all other breakout levels have held even yesterday as price moved lower and that was at 9 30 in the morning price did close below 45.8150 that was a td9 count breakout level but you know stevie's rule one bar doesn't mean squat it means it needs a second bar. And did we get that yesterday? No, price was just simply took off to the upside. So price found support. 45.79.50 and then 45.68.75. Those are key levels to watch. If those areas get taken out, that's our first early indication of a potential change in trend. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's uh, get to our uh, questions now. Some of those that have come in. The first one, uh, first one's coming in from Peter from Park City inside the Tiger's Den. Peter wants to take a look at two things: New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. Now, the advanced decline oscillator, folks, uh, represents what that is. Is that's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Now, the advanced decline line is what you see in panel number two. You can see that the advanced decline line has broken through a descending trend line out there. So that is certainly short-term positive. But what we can also see here, this is really panel number three, we can see that the advanced decline oscillator, again, that difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average, has formed lower highs. It's formed lower highs in the face of higher highs in price for the New York Stock Exchange. Now, we know the NYSE formed a TD9 count top out there. So it's got the topping pattern that's in place. What should unfold here is we should see the New York Stock Exchange begin to move lower. Now, it won't move lower in earnest until the spot volatility X gets above its 50-day X minutes moving average. That is actually panel number, the bottom panel out there. The 50-day is currently printed at 1483 price for the VIX right now is at 1391. So what you want to watch that 1483 level. If price closes above that, then we'll see price move lower. So we have two things going on here. Well, a couple other things. What else? Um, a couple weeks ago, on well, the trading day specifically of um, July 13th, we saw that uh, advanced client oscillator get above the plus 150 mark. What that tells us is about future highs to come that we should still see future highs after this condition here gets worked off. You can see a number of instances here, both at highs and at lows. We get those divergences between price making higher highs and events client making lower highs out there that says to be on the watch out for at least a retracement. You get more of the retracement when you get above that 50-day exponential moving average. So, Peter, I hope that that helped answer your questions with regard to what's going on inside of the New York Stock Exchange. The next question coming in from uh, Dizzle inside the Tigers. I'm going to have to change 
panels here would like to take a look at the 30-year Treasury. And the question is, should he go long? I believe that was the question. But let's go take a look at the 30-year Treasury charts out here. We'll pull those up here. We'll have the uh, daily, the weekly, the monthly, as well as some intraday charts out there. On a monthly time frame, price is sitting right back at support. And that is the bottom of its monthly profile. But it is also, you can see, that red oscillator and change line, that's the upper left-hand panel chart there, Dizzle. Is that going to strong resistance? So your risk reward is basically horrible to take a long position, knowing that that has been tested for the last five, six months, and that has held out there. So that says, okay, you better be real short term if you're looking at taking a long trade or understand that that is a real significant resistance point. So whereas you might have wanted to, not you, Dizzle, but others out there might have wanted to focus in on the shorter term time frame charts sometimes the larger time frame charts are giving us plenty of information now on a weekly basis you just have a sideways move with regard to the 30-year right now price is dealing with its oscillator and change line consolidating or trading with inside its profiles we look at the daily time frame you've got a fairly wide profile out there the price is consolidating with inside it um, you're at the midpoint, so I don't know whether price is going to move higher up to the top of the profile or to the bottom. So this is a horrible reward risk for any kind of uh, tr trade that's not really intraday. And what I mean by that is some trade that's not focusing on the 30-minute or 60-minute charts out there or something along those lines. But with regard to any other signals that we have out there, so what's the 30-minute chart telling us, Stevie? It's not telling us a whole heck of a lot. It's telling us that 126.03 is a resistance point out there, but we're also see that price trade between support and resistance. So what's the 30-year treasury gonna do? It's in the middle of nowhere land out there. It's not a good short, it's not a good long. Now, if you're already in a position, different story. But when I start a position today, you don't see the CB charts? Did I not make that change? Oh my goodness gracious, son of a goodness. Ah. Oh. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Okay, now we'll take a look at it. Sorry about the repeat, but I'll try to do it very fast. The key here, take a look at this monthly time frame chart. Ever since February of 2023, that level has acted as resistance. You have to assume that that is your level of resistance until proven otherwise. That makes a reward risk to the upside horrible. To the downside, horrible. Why? Because we're sitting at the bottom of that monthly profile. And on the weekly and the daily, you just have consolidations uh, in between their profile levels. On the daily specifically, you can see you're really at the midpoint. And when I pulled up the 30-minute chart out here, what I showed was that TD9 count breakdown level 126.03. So I don't have a clue quite frankly, as to where the 30-year is going to head to. What I do know, it is a horrible reward risk trade to put on right now. So I would just simply step aside. Uh, the next question coming in from Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill wants to take a look at horizontal trading ranges or primary trading ranges. So we're going to change panels here. I'm going to do this right now just to make sure that that unfolds. And let's go take a look at a couple of them. Let's take a look at the primary trading ranges, horizontal trading ranges for the Dow. This is the Dow Cash Indice out here. Now, I'm looking at, I have three different time frames. Actually, I have more than that that I can look at, but three primary time frames that I take a look at. First, what is a primary trading range boundary line? Great question out there. This is something that was really established or brought to us by Bud Rolfs many, many years ago, okay, at least a couple of decades. And what uh, Bud was looking for, he was looking for the largest number of opens and closes that occurred at a certain price or at approximate certain price out here. When we take a look at this chart, you'll see these green horizontal lines. What you will see out here is I've automated this process. Bud used to do it visually. Nothing wrong with doing it visually. I just like, why do it visually when we can do it automatively? And that's not even a word out there. But I created a word. You got to love that. Now, what this tool does is it identifies the largest number of co-located. doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close on a weekly basis. What we can see here, at the price point of 10558 for the Dow, there were a total of 186 opens or closes. Then, right near that level, you had 65 at 7936.54. That sets up the range. That sets up the horizontal trading range, or what I call a horizontal trading range boundary, or what Bud called a primary trading range. Well, now that we know that, if in fact the Dow takes out its daily TD9 count top, we took a look at that, or I believe we took a look at that at least on the Dow Equity Future contract, it's also present inside the uh, daily cash indice. If price takes that out, then what the Dow cash indice is signaling to and I is that price is likely going to make a move to 36,773. 
Hold on a minute. I want to check one thing out there before we before I finish that sentence, although I already finished it. But before I really finish it. OK, so that would be the likely target. However, I'll put up one more thing, and that's going to be the midpoint. And we take a look at a midpoint. Why do I have that as? Oh, that's a daily midpoint. Sorry about that. I didn't really mean that. I meant this. There we go. So now what we can see here with regard to the Dow, those little dotted lines out there, those are the midpoints in between those horizontal trading range numbers. And they can often act as an area of resistance. That number is 35,463. We're trading at 35,445 out there. So the key area here, I would say, Mr. Bill, to be watching on a weekly basis is going to be approximately, don't use this right to the tick, but 35,463. Now, the cool thing here, because we have that daily TD9 count top, if that gets taken out, then likely price gets above this area and heads up to that 36,773. There's even a weekly A to B equals CD pattern that can take us up to 37,481. Does that make sense, Mr. Bill? And take a look at those horizontal trading ranges for the Dow for its weekly time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back, we'll go ahead and take a look at the S&P, but we'll do that from a daily standpoint. Be right back. Attention traders, Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power-packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought-after newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7 a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets, and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees, and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome 
Welcome back, folks. So we got the uh, charts for the S&P up on our screen out here. We were take a look at those horizontal trading ranges, primary trading ranges, kind of uh, uh, work that uh, Bud Rolf had uh, created for us. Now, we looked at the Dow chart in that last segment. We looked at a weekly time frame. I now have the S&P up for its daily time frame. Again, you'll see the uh, the ranges. You'll see some numbers off to the side. Those are telling us how many co-located opens or closes that we've had out there. That establishes those ranges. These can change from time to time out here. But right now, what we know is that the S&P 500 completed more than a one-to-one, -one, larger A to B equal CD to upside. That's off of the October lows. And price is running right into the top of a rising price channel as price is also reaching 45.89.88. Now, we don't worry about trying to be right to the tick out there. What we know is that price is up at a resistance level at the same time that the S&P 500 has a, um, a Rhodesman Dimindicator top or a TD9 count top. I think it's Rhodesman Dimindicator top on the cash industry. I know that's what it is on the ES Mini out there. So those are the levels. If price is able to take out 45.90, well, then that signal there would be a move up to the 47.55 level. So, Mr. Bill, I hope that helps you out with regard to horizontal and primary trading range boundary lines. Let's go on to our next request out there. That's coming in from DPD inside the Tiger's Den. We're going to change panels here momentarily. Not make that mistake, hopefully, for a second time today. Get over those white background charts. And as we do that, let's pull up the charts for Caterpillar. C-A-T is the ticker symbol out here. Momentarily, we'll have that up on our screen. Caterpillar trading out at about 260.36 and trading with inside its daily profile. Now, what you'll see out there, you will see a wave number seven, and you will see a, um, a, a TD9 count top. Well, you'll now really see that. All the price is doing right now is just consolidating with inside that daily profile. The level that price needs to break through, it needs to close below 250.284. If it does that, then that will signal move to its breakout level of 244.09. On a weekly time frame, a bearish reversal candle this week could generate a Rhodesman to indicator top. A TD9 count top is likely to confirm this week and complete next week. So you got a TD9 count top in place on the daily. You're going to get a TD9 count top for the weekly come Friday. And we can see on the monthly chart, price is dealing with resistance. That's resistance, January of 2023. That was a Rhodesman to indicator top. Price must close above 266.04 in order for Caterpillar to be on its merry way to the upside. But otherwise, you've got a top. Basically, your resistance on the monthly, you've got a top that's going to be forming here on the weekly, and you've got a top in place for the daily. Watch support. Support, 257.02, 252.84, and then below that, 244.09. DPD, I hope that helped you out. I also think you had another request, and that was for Microsoft, MSFT. They were out with earnings last night after the bell. Microsoft, so far, pulling back and testing support. Now, what we don't have out here, actually, we have a gap to the downside. The gap to the downside now is confirming this um, uh, Rhodes Metam Indicator top, but we're also getting a potential of an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. The swing point that it's dealing with that would create that A to B equals CD was from the trading day of July 21st. Volume on that trading day, 69 million shares. So far, we are at 28 million shares in two hours of trading. So it's got the volume. Can it bust through support? Support, again, being 334.60. If it busts through support, then we've got the A to B equals CD to the down. So let's go ahead and we'll actually draw this one in. Let's uh, copy and paste. That didn't work. Let's try to copy and paste. That didn't work. We can try one more time because the third time is the charm. Copy and paste. There you go. There's a third time. And there's your A to B equals CD. Voila. Now, Price must close below 334. If it does that, then what it's telling us is price would get back to really test this hammer candle from July 11. And that is at 327 even Steven. Now, the A to B equals CD is around the 325 level. Boy, if price closed below the bottom of a hammer candle, that's not a good sign out there. But right now, Microsoft has held support on its daily time frame. You got a TD9 count top on the weekly time frame, and price is back inside its profile. The question is, where does it finish out the day on Friday? If it finishes the day above, 338.56, conditions are neutral. If price is below that, conditions are neutral. Bearish, consolidating, bearish, so to speak, with price trading with inside its bullish structured weekly profile. The level of support here from Microsoft, 300.65 to 30697 out there. That's well below that one to one A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, on a monthly basis, you would need price to at least dip below last month's low. That's at 322.50. 
that would then trigger a road momentum indicator topping pattern out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at the charts there from Microsoft. Hope that helps you out. DPD, and thanks so much for taking the time to put in a request. The next request out here from Dan inside the Tiger's Den, and Dan wanted to take a look at the KRE. And KRE, that is the regional banking uh, ETF out here. If we take a look at KRE, the levels, prices trade above a real key level out here. What's that key level? First, the KRE negated a TD9 count top and negated that pattern on July 24th. Now, it negated the pattern, but price ran right into resistance. The buzz saw the top of its profile, 47.70. That turned out to be a one-day move to the downside. Now we're up above that. A close in the KRE above 47.70, Dan, is a bullish signal. Now, there's an A to B equals CD. We'll go over to my black background charts to put that in here on a Month on a weekly basis, price formed a TD9 count bottom and price is trading above profile. This suggests it wants to move higher. Move higher to where? Excellent question. I would say the next target to the upside would be 5288. 5288 is the monthly oscillator and change line. Now, we can see on a monthly basis, price pulled back, tested that breakout level of 3517. No bottom signal there. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Sometimes pulling back to support is a bottom. Sometimes moving up to resistance can be a top. In this case here, we can see in the KRE, it most certainly was a bottom, coincided with that weekly TD9 count bottom out here. So KRE, let's go switch over to our other charts and figure out where that A to B equals CD level is on the daily time frame, really on the weekly time frame for it as well. But let's go pull over there. We'll take a look. This will be easier for us to look at volumes. Let's get KRE up here. Let's take a look at the daily time frame. Let's just simply expand it out. So here, this is really the one to be watching for. So the A point all the way down here at the low on May the 4th. The B point, the high out here on June the 6th. And the C point is the low that formed on June 23rd. The 1 to 1 A to B equals C to get to the 49.84. Now the B point out there, the swing point, June 7th, did volume error of 33 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with 29, 30, 26. So it really hasn't had the volume. Does it have to have the volume to go and do an A to B equals CD? Absolutely, positively not. And in fact, in this case here, prices trade uh, took out a TD9 count, traded above the top of its profile, should go on to that 49.84 level. What's above that? Above that would be 52.69. Watch for a bearish reversal candle. That would set up a Gartley sell inside the regional banking sector, the KRE. So, Dano, I hope that helps you out with the KRE. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. McGuppy is the next request out there. And McGuppy wanted to take a look at tick symbol IMNM. And IMNM, let's change our screens out here. Let's not make that mistake or try not to make that mistake. And INM, and the question was, did this form a TD9 count bottom yesterday? And the answer is absolutely, positively, most definitely. So you got a TD9 count with inside its bullish structured profile. That's a nice thing out there. When we come back to this break, we'll continue looking at IMNM. We're going to let McGuppy know where this is likely headed to, at least where the next battles are up above. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, we'll take a look at the charts here for IMNM, that is Immunome, out here. It uh, formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday for its daily time frame. Your next resistance area, your next battle is going to be at 749. And 749 is the center of that uh, bullish structure daily profile. If price can clear 749, then you're off to the oscillator and change line at 786. If price can close above the 786 level, that's a green oscillator and change line, you should make your way to 879 to 898. Now, I mentioned that at 749 is your next resistance level, and then above that would be 786. Turns out that at 782 is the center of a new weekly profile that's attempting to form. It's not shown on this white background chart here. It's, I'm using my super Doppler tool on the black background charts, which I happen to have up on the screen out there. So just know that at that 782-ish area, 786, should you get up there, that's going to be a fairly significant resistance zone. That if you can clear, then that's telling you about a move up to the 898 to 924 level. So that's what I see when I take a look at INMM. Good spotting there, McGuppy, with regard to that TD9 count. And best of luck to you on that trade. David H. Wants, writes in, and he wants to take a look at Asimil, ASML. Now, let's actually read the question here. The question is, hey, Steve, do your charts suggest there's more downside opportunity on ASML over the next couple of weeks out here. So let's go see what the charts say. We've got ASML up on our screen out here. What do we know? This formed a Rosemont to indicator top. Price is trading below, well, it's it's dealing with a brand new profile that formed yesterday. So this is gonna be helpful information to help you answer that question. That new profile support level, it is bullish in structure, Traded with inside it yesterday. It's still trading with inside it as we speak right now, and will do so if price is able to close above and hold 683.20. First number to write down on your pad of paper there, David, is 683.20. If price holds that, now what is price also doing with regard to moving to that swing point? Just simply say price, I really mean volume, is really what I was really trying to refer to. That volume is on the trading day of July 20th, 2.9 million shares. So far today, you've done 300,000. So you're moving down light with volume. Now, why is that important? Well, one of the reasons it could be important is because if that low gets taken out, you could have an A to B equals CD pattern to the uh, downside out there. But right now, so your question was, do you see an opportunity for Azimil to move lower? The first thing is going to be dealing with that profile. 
So we've given you that number. The second thing is going to be dealing with that low from July 20th out there at 713.13. It's got volume of 2.4 million shares. So if price can get below that, then odds favor the answer yes. At 676.44, that happens to be the top of the weekly profile. So you know that that is also another support level right now with price being above it. It's been above it for many, many months. That's a key level of support that if closed below on a weekly basis would then suggest to move to 648.17. So right now, the answer to your question would be based upon the data that we have here. You asked, is there more downside opportunity? There is. The price has to bust through these key levels of support out there. Now, the reason to be taking a look at that is because the monthly chart is likely going to form bar number nine of a TD9 count. Now, that pattern could complete next month. Now, in order for that to occur and unfold, what we need to see at this month, that's next Monday, is a close above 680.71. If price closes above that, then the monthly is going to give you a TD9 count. Says be watchful, be careful. You've got a roads momentum indicator top on the daily time frame out there. And I'm guessing we could come up with an A to B equals CD that was confirmed last week out there. So it's all about support. You've got the tops in place. Most certainly you do. But what we don't have is key levels of support breaking. And those are the areas for you to keep an eye on, David. I hope that helps you out. At least we've been able to identify those for you. Uh, we had another question with regard to the KRE. And this was from uh, somebody, uh, Dan. Dan F. writes in. And Dan says, started a short position yesterday. The TD9 on the daily chart looks like it's failing today. Actually, and exactly right. You are exactly right. Do you think you should close the position? So we did that analysis out here. Um, the answer is yeah. When when the, yes I do, uh, yes I do. Let's first let's look at a thirty minute chart. See if there's anything out here at all. So you, you can do a couple of things. One, it looks like it's failing as we speak right now. We both know that the um, we both know that the market should move should move. Um, after uh, Powell comes out. So I don't know, Dan, just like you don't know, which way is this going to move in? So I was really looking at the 30-minute chart just to see if we had some kind of short-term top out here, you know, maybe to kind of buffer, but we don't. Price is trading above the top of its profile. There's no topping signal in place. In fact, it took out a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, a Wave 7 top out there. So we don't see anything out here to suggest that price is getting ready to head lower. So a couple of different options. I would say at the end of the day, if price closes above, at this stage here, if price closes above, well, it, actually, I, 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 that TD9 count top didn't fail, isn't failing today. Remember, it failed on the trading day of July 24th. Price closed above the high of that pattern. So that's really an important thing. It's not really today, but today's doing is taking out resistance. That's the top of that uh, profile out there in the daily time frame. So um, if price is going to close it back below 47.70, uh, even though you've got a negated TD9 count top, uh, well, it's really hard to find anything bearish about the KRE right now. Not that it can't turn into something bearish, but it's hard to find as we speak right now. So, Dan, I don't mean to be kind of uh, wishy-washy here, but I really think we won't know the answer to that until the end of the day. But here, yesterday, you were starting that transaction. The only thing you had going for you was at 4770, the top of that uh, profile out there. So I hope that that uh, helps you out, and uh, we'll certainly know more tomorrow. The next request uh, comes in from um, Nicholas. Nicholas A. writes in. Nicholas, thanks for writing in. I request Boeing out there. Good morning, Steve. Would you please go over Boeing, possibly reaching the 229 to 233 level out here. Uh, thanks for your comments. Have a great day. So when we take a look at Boeing, Boeing is actually taking out a TD9 count top that formed on July the 12th. In fact, that top is going to create, uh, looks like it should create at least a small A to B equal C to the upside. It looks like there might be a large one and another TD. So there's two TD9 count tops that Boeing is taking out today. The first one was the one from June 12th. Was that June 12th? Uh, June the 12th, yep. And the second one was the one from July the 12th out there. Now, what I want to do here, because we've got A to B equals CD patterns, is move over to the black background charts. On a uh, monthly basis, the next price target, assuming that price closed above 221.33 on Monday, would be up at the 241.80 level. You were asking about 229 to 233. Um, I would say 241.80 would more likely be the target. So let's go move back. Let me do that here now. Let's change the screens. Uh, change windows. 
Give me a moment. Let's get over there. Perfect. Now let's pull up the charts for Boeing, BA. Let's open up the daily time frame. Let's get rid of that A to B equals CD pattern. So this we had a consolidation that was going on here. Come on. What the heck is going on? Okay. Let's try doing this. Okay. So, wow. Let me, let's, I want to look at the weekly chart. Right, so when I want to look at A to B equals CD patterns, when I come to a daily and it starts getting a bit confusing, then I like to go to the weekly charts out here. So on a weekly basis, if I were going to put in an A to B equals CD pattern, let's see if we get a decent enough retracement out here. So the A point, I'd start all the way down here on September 26th. That runs into a high on the uh, February 13th, and the low looks like that took place all the way down here on March the 13th, a 28% retracement. Boy, that's just hard for Stevie to say that was enough for retracement for this to be an A to B equals CD pattern. Instead, I think what we're looking at is this consolidation. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Um, we're taking a look at the chart here for Boeing. This is the daily time frame that I've got up on my chart. Now, on a daily basis, we can draw an A to B equal CD pattern. Had the nice 618 retracement, which was a pullback to profile support out here. And price has taken out the B point with volume. The B point did volume of 8 million shares. You're at 13 million so far. So the one to one. 
A to B equals C to gets you up to 233, the 1 to 1.272, 241. The weekly, as we talked about, has a consolidation pattern. And that consolidation uh, breakout gets up to about the 252-ish area out there. So next price target with regard to Boeing, 233-ish area above that 241 and above that would get us up to the top of that uh, weekly consolidation pattern in about the 252 area. So that's what I see when I take a look at Boeing, Nicholas. I hope that that helps you out. Next request was to take a look at the Junior Nugget. Uh, did I get that one up on the screen? No, we did not. But let's go put that one up there. J-N-U-G. And that was for First Station, I believe. Let me see here. And First Station writes in. Joe says, good morning, Steve. Can you please take a look at Junior Nugget? I'm in it. In the long position, where do you see the next time, the next few days? Looking for a short-term hold. I think you should be looking for a long-term hold. Hold. But you got to do what you've got to do out there with regard to the junior nugget. All right, now what it's doing on a daily time frame, make sure I'm on, nope, I'm not on the right screen. Let's get that settled here. Junior nugget momentarily. Uh, what we'll see here is it is trading between profiles. So it formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom. Does that back on June 29th. Makes an A to B equals C to the upside. No bearish reversal candle. And all price does is pull back to test support. And support was the bottom of the profile in that oscillator and change line. Now you've got resistance that it's taken on, and that's at the center of the profile. Both buyers and sellers are at 3687. If price can close above 3687, should get us back up to 3850. Above 3850, we should uh, then go tackle the swing point from July 18th. That did volume of 1.7 million shares. You'd love to see price moving into that with more than 1.7. Of course, a close above that would then set up a new A to B equals CD to the upside. The weekly chart out here shows a consolidation with inside profiles. Wow, that's the end of the show. Stevie wasn't paying attention to the clock, but I did get through all the requests out there. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care. Be safe.